In course 24, we're gonna make what I call a splashy ball. I'm not sure why I call it a splashy ball, but it may be because I am imagining you're gonna use a bunch of bright colors or different colors or just make it really interesting. So the whole point of it is for you to keep using your sewing machine and practicing how to sew curves. So making this ball and the sections will help you practice all the curves. So if you want a rounder, more ball, because mine's kind of more like a pumpkin shape, if you want yours to be a bit more rounded, um, you may use less than seven sections. In the tutorial, I tell you to cut out seven sections but um, of the pattern piece, but you may want to do five or six. You can experiment. So um, what I really like about this is that you can do sort of like greens and well not really greens but like oranges and all different fall patterns and kind of make things out of this so yes it is a project for you to uh, practice sewing curves with the sewing machine but you can make things out of it like it does look like a pumpkin so maybe you do oranges and turn it into pumpkins or I don't know all well, other types of colors turn them into ornaments smaller ones and I do give you a second pattern uh, so that you can experiment with the uh, thinner pattern pieces and the sort of flatter and wider pieces. So you check it out and see which one you want to play with. In the tutorial, I use the pattern piece called Splashy, Splashy Bowl Pattern. So anyway, get your pattern downloaded, cut out your fabric pieces, and even if you're using scraps like I did, that's perfectly fine. It's all about practicing how to uh, continue sewing curves on the sewing machine. Okay, get your stuff ready and let's get going. So you're gonna need seven of your pattern pieces cut out of plain cotton fabric. And every time I say plain, um, I know it's printed, but I mean plain by it's just cotton. So um, what you're gonna do, and the process is gonna be the same throughout the whole entire sewing of the ball, is you're gonna start with two pieces and you're gonna place them right sides together and put two or three pins in it to hold it together. Right, so add your pins. So you're gonna sew just on one side, so you wanna keep the pin head away from the side you're sewing on, just to be safe it doesn't get caught into your sewing machine. And I'm going to keep a quarter of an inch seam allowance, meaning I'm going to sew from one end here all the way around to this end. So not around all the way, but just on one side. So I've gone ahead and sewn around, keeping about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You can leave more if you'd like, but then you can also trim it off after. See, after um, or every time you leave a larger seam allowance, you're always supposed to trim it. So if you become really good at um, leaving about a quarter of an inch, then you're good. There's no trimming. And what you're going to do is you're going to open it up, okay? And then you're going to take your next piece and continue the process. So right sides together, and again, this is the plain cotton, so there really is no wrong or right side for that one. And I'm gonna pin it in place. And yes, you do back stitch on the ends. I forgot to mention that. If you don't, it's not the worst thing because you actually end up going over the original stitch every time you come to one edge. But um, I do it just for added extra security. So I'm gonna sew this part as well. So I've gone ahead and sewn this arc here as well. And you can see as you're working your way around that the ball is starting to form. So I'm gonna continue all of them until I have um, them all attached, okay? So I'm gonna do the same exact process and keep going around. All right, so I have sewn together all of my pieces. There's a pin there. Um, I put them all together and when I turn them around, you can see that the sphere or the ball has been created almost all complete. And it's amazing how those simple little pieces create this beach ball. So if this happened to you where you didn't reach all the way towards the end, I'll show you how to fix it when, um, actually I'll show you right now how to fix it. So what you're gonna do for the last one is you're gonna leave an opening, right, for the stuffing, because we have to stuff this ball. So on this end, as you're closing it up, right, you're gonna 
pin it just like you have been and i'm going to do that in a moment but if it didn't close up like mine didn't and i'm glad it didn't so i can show you because it's super common you're going to bring the stitch all the way down into all these ends just bring it down and back stitch over that and it will lock it all in place and close it so for the uh opening it, it's up to you however much you want to leave open but what i'm going to do is again pin it with three pins and I'm going to leave enough of an opening so that most of my fingers, at least four, could get in there and stuff this ball. You can mark it with a pencil if you need to. By now, you totally know what I mean by that. Um, if you've been going through all my courses and you're used to it, maybe you even know where to stop by eye. Meaning, you know that you can sew here, backstitch, come up to here, stop, backstitch, right? Then I'm going to begin here. Go back stitch all the way down, back stitch. So I'm going to leave an opening here with back stitching on each ends because that, those are my pressure points, and I'm going to turn the ball right side out there, and I don't want it to rip. Now that I've sewn and left the opening here, so I have back stitching here and here, here and here, I'm going to turn this right side out, and you can see how cool this beach ball, all of a sudden I'm calling it a beach ball, but really that's what it is, sort of. Um, how cool is this? And, and I've noticed with this simple project that no matter which uh, fabrics you use, it always looks great. It You know, there's like no coordination with color of mine. Again, I just used um, the uh, scraps that I had, but it looks great. So you're going to remember here that after we stuff, we have to do a blind stitch for this one. So what I'm gonna do now is instead of even ironing, and I sometimes do this when I just have this tiny, tiny space and I don't wanna iron, and you can do this. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna do what's called a finger crease. But if you have your iron on, definitely use your iron. So what I do is I fold it in a little, right? And over here's where I would actually do the ironing, but instead with my nail, I'm gonna press, right? I'm gonna press and I formed a crease. You see that? It's just like ironing, just for the opening. Now, of course, you can't do this if you have an iron, uh, if you have a garment with wrinkles in it and you want to iron it. But if you have a small space like this and you don't feel like getting your iron on and heated, this is a quick fix. Again, just for small openings like this. Or if you're ever, I don't know, on a road trip or something, right? And you're sewing in the car. Because I know I do that with long road trips. Obviously, if I'm not driving, I'm always sewing or crocheting or something. Just to help that time pass faster. And, of course, you don't have an iron with you. So I, I do this when I have to close projects. So I have my crease. And you know you need that line for the... Um, closing of with the blind stitch so here I go I'm ready to go that was easy and I am going to begin stuffing this ball and you do want to stuff it so it feels really tight you know not like a loose tight ball so I'm using my fingers to push it to the farthest area first because if not it can get lumpy and bumpy I fluff up my stuffing before I stick it in just to make sure it's a little extra fluffy. I have my uh, ball stuffed and you'll notice that it does resemble more of a pumpkin, but that's totally fine. If you wanted a rounder, more uh, ball shape, you can do six pieces instead of seven. So now what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, do the blind stitch here. So if you know how to do this, of course, you can just go on and do it on your own. If not, follow along. So I have my double threaded needle and I'm going to start on the inside. Let me get closer. I'm going to start on the inside folded over area here. I don't want my needle to go through. I'm just going to stay on the flap that I folded over. Okay, so I'm going to start up here and go across small stitches. Then I'm going to come across to this side here 
and sew right on top make sure it didn't go through that one did so let me fix it and i go back over to the brown fabric always staying up by the crease then cross over to the flowered fabric well they're both flowered <laughs> but the brighter fabric then the brown fabric and i keep doing this back and forth and we close up the sphere ball, whatever you want to call it, with the blind stitch. So um, if you or if this is time now, whenever you're taking this course and it's like um, fall season, you can do these all in orange or create a theme and turn these into pumpkins or whatever the season or whatever holiday you celebrate, you can definitely turn it into um, the holiday you're celebrating or just make these for fun. I don't know, make a game out of them, make a bunch of them, make smaller ones, make larger ones. The pattern, if you uh, recreate or redraw that shape yourself and make it longer, you'll get a rounder ball. But if you make it wider, you'll get a more squatter uh, sphere. So you can even play around with that. And you can play around with making one just out of four or making one out of three. And whatever else you wanna try, because again, you're just really using scrap fabrics for this. And this project was designed just for you to continue practice using the sewing machine in order to make 3D projects. So I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next course.